Hello everyone, my name is Marcus from DM Photography and I'd like to welcome you to my new video. If you are new to the channel or you haven't subscribed yet but you're generally interested in photography around rangefinder cameras like the Leica here but not exclusively and you like what you see, please consider subscribing to my channel down below because I will be covering all kinds of topics around these types of camera. But without further ado, let's get into today's topic which is all about manually focusing with a rangefinder camera. But first, intro. In this video I want to cover a couple of topics that I wish I would have known before I bought the Leica or I wish I would have known right when I started taking pictures with the Leica when I bought it. It took me quite some time to make this video because I had to think a lot about what I want to cover in today's video. There are many bits and pieces of what I'm going to cover in today's video spread across YouTube that I'm trying to collect in this one video and make one comprehensive video around focusing with the rangefinder cameras. I hope you find it useful. So this is how I imagine taking pictures with a Leica should look like or for any other camera for that matter. It's not um, framing your scene, focusing forever, taking a shot or many shots, looking at your display, browsing through the shots, deleting pictures, framing again, focusing again, looking again at your screen, taking more pictures. And also you can admit it looks way cooler if you're able to shoot like this than, you know, taking a shot, checking out your picture, taking another shot and so on and so forth. In my case, since I'm shooting with a Leica MD, which has no back screen, I don't even have another choice than shooting like the way you've seen in this short video. If you're interested to learn how to shoot photos without the constant urge of checking your back screen, or you're shooting with an analog camera, or you also have a camera that has no back screen, like my Leica MD here, you can check out a video that I did about a month ago, and I will leave a link up here and in the description below. Um, if you want to check it out after this video where I explain in greater detail what you need to pay attention to when you want to shoot like you've just seen me shooting, meaning not checking the back screen all the time. The lenses you own play a big part in this. It's now time to have a closer look at a Leica lens. What we see here are my two Leica cameras and the three Summicron lenses that I own. I did a separate video on the lenses and I will leave a link above if you want to check out the video later. If we look at the lenses, we see a similar design on all three of them. At first, let's look at my 50mm lens. On top we have the aperture ring, which if I turn it controls the aperture and therefore the depth of field. Below it we find the focusing ring. If I turn the focusing ring, you can see that the lens moves up and down. Here we can see that the 75mm lens is built in the same way. Again we have the aperture ring on top, the focus ring below and when I turn it the lens moves as well. The same holds for the 35mm lens that I have mounted on my Leica MD here. Let's have a closer look now at the 50mm APO Summicron lens. On the focus ring we see different scales. In orange we see the distance to the subject in feet and below it, in white, we see the distance in meters. And here at the bottom we see aperture values and ranges which indicate what in your photo will also be in focus other than your subject. The spread of the values varies from lens to lens. I will explain this more in a bit. This looks quite similar on the 75mm APO Summicron. What we notice other than the difference in size is the aperture scale at the bottom it is way more tight than on the 50mm lens. This is due to the fact that at higher focal length, the depth of field is more compressed. In conclusion, this means that the higher your focal length is, the more challenging it is to focus precisely. The way how focusing works when the lens is mounted onto the camera is that the Leica has these two windows here. The small little window projects a small white rectangle into your frame, which you see through the viewfinder. 
By turning the focusing ring on the lens, you mechanically move this white rectangle inside the viewfinder. The goal is to overlap and align what you see through the viewfinder with what you see inside the white rectangle. I will demonstrate this in a bit so you can see how it looks like. Here we see the 35mm lens in a close-up mounted on my Leica MD. Now that you have seen the other two lenses, you might realize how the aperture scale at the bottom is more spread out compared to the other two lenses. Again, this has to do with the fact that at 35mm the depth of field is wider. On top of it, we have the focus ring with the distances in feet and meter, and lastly, the aperture ring. The scale on the focus ring indicates at what distances the lens currently focuses. In this case, a subject which is 2 meters away will now be exactly in focus. The 2 meter marker is now aligned with the middle of the scale at the bottom. Let me explain to you what the numbers and ranges at the bottom mean. You see the aperture values of the lens mirrored on both sides of the middle line. From this scale you read how large your depth of field at a given aperture is, meaning what else other than a subject that you focused on will be in focus in your photo. Let me make an example at an aperture value of f2.8. From the scale at the bottom we can now read the range of what will be in focus. We look at the 2.8 on the left of the middle and at the 2.8 of the right of the middle and then read the distances above. In this case, at f2.8, everything between 1.75 and 2.33 meters will be in focus. At f8 and a focus distance of 2 meters, we can read that everything in between 1.43 and 3.4 meters is in focus. And if we go to the extreme at f16, we see that it uses this huge spread. Everything between 1.12 meters and 11.3 meters will be in focus. I will leave a link to the Leica website where you will find the exact information on the depth of field of each Leica lens in the description below. I highly encourage you to visit the website and download the specs for your lenses. You have now seen in practice how higher aperture values have a bigger depth of field and therefore a higher tolerance if you don't nail the focus on your subject absolutely precisely. It makes it easier to focus and you have less hit and miss if you are not an expert at focusing or if you are under time pressure and can't afford to measure focus precisely. But of course, at a lower aperture, when you need to focus very precisely, you will get this beautiful shallow depth of field. So choosing the right aperture for the composition you are intending and then adapting and understanding the resulting focus situation you will find yourself in meaning if you will have time to focus precisely, is crucial in photography. This is exactly why I said in my previous videos where I explained how to shoot confidently with a camera that has no back screen that you need to know your lenses exactly. Let me now show you how to normally focus with a Leica rangefinder. Here we look through the viewfinder of my Leica MD and we can now see the white rectangle in the middle of the viewfinder that I was mentioning before. The way how focusing works is that we need to find a vertical line in the frame and then overlap the vertical line from the scene with the vertical line inside the white rectangle by using the focusing ring on the lens. Focusing with a rangefinder is limited to aligning vertical lines. You cannot align horizontal lines and I will show you this a bit later. When I now turn the focus ring on the lens we can see how this rectangle starts to move. We need to turn the focus ring until both vertical lines are perfectly overlapping. Then that object is in focus. And here one more time, if my initial focus distance was set too close. Just turn the focus ring again and align. What you don't want to do is going back and forth. It will only confuse you and won't make your focusing better. Additionally, your eyes will get tired after some time and you won't know anymore if something is in focus, believe me. Here I am demonstrating to you how you cannot focus horizontal lines. The white rectangle just moves horizontally. I cannot tell from turning the focus ring when the upper edge of the TV is in focus. But when I move the camera slightly to the left to find the closest vertical line in the scene, I can easily focus on the left corner of the TV screen. 
And one more time, don't forget not to do this. This wasn't so hard, was it? So this is the main method on how to focus with a Leica rangefinder camera. But there is another type of focusing which I like to apply, especially in street photography. And that one is called zone focusing. Let me show you how that works. In zone focusing, we want to make use of the depth of field scale on the lens that I was explaining earlier and set a predefined focus range for the situation we want to take pictures in. The aim of it is that we do not need to focus every subject that we want to take a photo of through the viewfinder, but at the same time we want to be sure and confident that the subjects are in focus. Let me show you how I set up my zone focusing when I do intend to do street photography on my 35mm lens. An aperture value of f11 suits my needs best on this lens. It gives me exactly the spread in depth of field with the flexibility that I need. The next thing I need to do is bring the focus ring in the right position for the zone that I want to have in focus. I want to set it up in a way that at f11 on the right side I have the infinity sign. This now means that everything from infinity and now we need to follow the scale to the 11 on the other side until in this case 1.8 meters will be in focus. This setup suits me best for street photography when I choose to use zone focusing. I then rarely need to take photos of subjects that are closer than 1.8 meters. For close-up shots like in street portraits, I would choose the normal focusing method which I explained to you earlier. When zone focusing during street photography, I shoot in aperture priority mode most of the time. This means that I need to pay attention to the lower shutter speeds caused by the rather high aperture value. Since in street photography there is movement in a scene, I need to make sure that my shutter speeds at f11 are high enough so that I avoid having blurry pictures. In my case I tend to aim for 1 250th or 1 500th of a second. This means that I will have to compensate by adapting the ISO to the lighting circumstances. During daylight this is often just a minor correction to ISO 400, so not too bad. Wow, this took me longer to explain than I thought. I hope you're still with me. Um, so this is how you do zone focusing with a Leica rangefinder camera and how to make use of all the information that you see on your lens. This is it for today's video. I hope you liked the video and I hope that you learned something. For me it was very important to make this video and talk about this and also many people asked me if I can do a video on focusing. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below or if you have questions regarding um, focusing or anything else that I forgot to mention in the video and that I can help you with. Um, if you liked the video please hit the like button below and also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. But before I leave you as always I would like to show you more photos that I took this time especially street photography. Enjoy! and see you next time.